So we did so many ride-alongs. Uh, at first it was like, wow, this is exciting. Then I was like, okay, enough of this. And then it actually got to be really interesting because you got to, to be in the head of, of you know, the a police officer and, and think the way they think. And it's scary, like, for an actor to be, like, finally, like, wow, I feel like a cop, you know? And, uh, and then remind yourself, you're like, oh, you're an actor. Um, so it took a little bit of time to shake it off, but it was, it was an eye-opener, you know, to see um, people that actually uh, care about the neighborhood, you know, care about the culture, and then actually want to protect those people that, like, actually want to do good in their lives, and then, you know, have total and full confront to be able to, um, you know, fight those criminals or, like, you know, make sure that they're not hurting the, the, the honest business owner and to try to, you know, make their neighborhood that they're assigned to, like, a better place. See you guys out here being good little company, man. It's all fun and games. You get to run and jump and fight and shoot. I'm done with that. Watch your six. So beyond the ride-alongs, did you do any more police training? Like, they... Yeah, we did, uh, um, I did, uh, police training with my wife. Yeah. <laughs> um, it was interesting because it's like, it's, it's, it's how do you, like, I, I guess your relationship changes also, like, in, depending on the, on the, uh, on the, you know, your, whatever you do in life, you know, like, uh, sometimes you're, you're gone a lot, you know, like, and, you know, with a, with a cop, you know, you, you got to make sure that your, your wife is okay and that you're, you know, offer the same kind of support, but at the same time you try to, throw away everything that happened during the day. And I asked those guys a lot of questions, um, you know, about, you know, how, how it is, you know, and, and try to really get into the psyche. I mean, because I think this is what this movie is mainly about, you know. There is, like, action sequences, and some people would say it's like an action movie, but for me it was like a, kind of like, you know, the movies that I love, like, you can count on me, you know, where it really focuses on the relationships. And uh, I asked, you know, then we did weapons training, we did sparring, you know, uh, and, and it really gets you in the mindset when you punch somebody in the face and they're punching your back. <laughs> <laughs> or when you go and crash a, a police officer car. I mean, we don't have to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> this, question is for the oh, okay. this question is for the both of you. Um, when I was watching the movie, I became very emotional. So how emotionally invested did you get, did you become while filming this movie? I mean, for me, I mean, a lot of things kind of hit close to home when, you know, I, I don't, without giving so much away, you know, but uh, some things hit kind of close to home, you know, and just having to, like, have, it's kind of scary when you live a life that you don't know when your partner's going to actually come back home or not, you know, and I think that's really hard for a cop's wife. It's kind of, you know, these, these men put themselves on the line all the time um, just to protect our, our city and protect, you know, our fellow, you know, citizens and stuff, and, and I think that's probably one of the hardest parts, and also after watching the movie, um, you know, you're reading it like that, but the visuals this movie has, I mean, after I saw it, I was emotional too. It's funny, like, I read the script a couple times, you know, and, and I knew the movies, I was there for some shootings, and it really, some, something struck inside of me when I saw some of the scenes that they were, that I wasn't a part of, but that they went through, and that was kind of shocking. And the fact of knowing that half these stories are, are like, pretty pretty much true, that they, they come from, you know, real, real cops, and these are real true stories. So it's kind of freaky things that really go on in a normally looking neighborhood, you know, and what goes on behind doors is kind of crazy. And, and you know, my vision has kind of changed towards cops just because of what they do on a daily day basis, you know. Do you think, like, riding along with these cops, that's kind of like a defense mechanism for them because they have to see so many, like, hor horrific things? I think it's just dudes being dudes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, seriously, I, I think, uh, you know, when... I mean, I don't think they, they think about it that much. I'm like, if you think about it, you're like, you're constantly like a head on a swivel, you know, you're looking for danger, but at the same time, you're like, you're with somebody, and sometimes it can be boring, you know what I mean? And there's like, and um, you kind of want it to be boring, in, in all honesty. You kind of want it to be nice and quiet in the streets, and you want it to, uh, to know that your presence is being, you know, that people are aware of your presence. Um, but, you know, what are you gonna do? They, they work for like 12 hours or something. You know, they work for a long, long time. So when you're, you know, when we're doing movies, we like joke around all the time. And that's the one thing that me and Jake were surprised at as well. Like the real cops actually joke around a lot, you know. So we're like, yeah, we should definitely do it in this movie, you know. Like, uh, you know, when I initially read it, I was like, I didn't see that much humor, but it was like going at it. I think there'll be a lot of humor and there'll be a lot of room for humor. And uh, also just looking at it, looking at the movie and 
as a whole, it would be kind of cool to have like action, funny, action, funny, without it being like an action comedy, but like humor, I guess you could say, and then touching, and then you know some good family, family time, and uh, just make it a well-rounded picture. What was it like working with a director that's also written the screenplay and is also the director versus working with someone who's just the director? I think I mean I think it's interesting. You have a lot. You can play a lot, you know, and it's his vision, it's his baby, which makes it, and he had all that much more control over it. Um, I think it's really interesting when you have that in a job just because it allows you, it, it gives you, it allows you to trust him kind of completely with where, where he's going, what he wants, because it's, it's that one person whole. Usually it gets lost in translation when you have one guy writing and the other guy trying to interpret it, and they have two different ideas, but when it's the same kind of guy, I mean, that, that's what I at least I think. I feel like you know it allows you to trust the director a little bit more because it's his vision and he's the one that's kind of in charge of, of, of everything. Do you think he was less flexible or more flexible? Oh, I think David Ayer's more, f I think he's a flexible director, just the fact he's an actor's director and by that meaning, you know, he gives you a lot of freedom. Like Michael said, you know, you do your takes and you do your stuff, but then he'll give you freedom to kind of make it your own. You know, uh, improv is, is basically all of it's just kind of out there, you know, just kind of throw things out, like Will Ferrell does a lot, you know, and yeah. Jim Carrey, that's like a lot more where they just go and go and go. This was more, you know, watching the guys doing it and, and you know, that, that my fun little sex scene, you know, that's mostly all written, you know, but then he'll tell you like, oh, you know, you add, <laughs> you add like little things here and there and you, you do certain stuff, like you add certain words or, you know, maybe if, if it's written one way, you just kind of change the past tense or you kind of change something to make it yours. That's the kind of freedom you know you kind of have, and I don't know if you want to add something. Well, yeah, I mean, like he wrote the scenes, you know what I mean, yeah. like expertly, and he's a great writer. Um, I think he he really is. When I I always chase the writing first, you know, like when I first read Crash, I'm like, oh please, I want to do this movie, <laughs> you know, and and you know different stories like that. And this was one where I'm like, oh, I really want to do this movie. And uh, and what's interesting with him is that he has. He literally painted the entire scenario. His writing is so strong that when you read it, you're like, oh, I know exactly what you're like looking a novel at. Or... Yeah, so when like we talk about the scenes, and a lot of times he would plug it in, plug in his ideas about it, and those are usually the things that we try to improvise. Mm -hmm. And to, you know, he had no pressure because it's like, if it wasn't good, he could always cut it. And, but what's interesting is I'm like, oh, or rewrite it. Or rewrite it. Um, <laughs> and then sometimes he would just write scenes right then and there for us to do. And I remember a couple of times I was like, I don't know, David. I'm like, I, I don't know if I, I'm, I'm not pulling that line off. And he's like, all right. And I'm like, usually I'd be like, can I change it? And he's like, yeah, no, man. <laughs> yeah, can you do me a favor and say it? And if it sucks, I'll cut it out. Like, that's the kind of guy he is. Uh, okay. And so I was like, okay. And then there's a lot of times where I'm like, it's always interesting when a, when a line is very hard to do. Those are the ones that I work at the most because that's usually what reveals the character to you. And like, you know, like even a, a, a line is like, look at this, it's got more bling than old lady's wedding ring. Um, you know, that is like something that I wouldn't say. But I'm like, wow, he says it though. And so I really worked out what Savali would say. And there's like a list of hard lines that I also think give texture to the performance, you know, because those are, it's not like I say that in every movie. So I'm like, I kept trying to use it in life until it was, you know, like the old lady, you know what I mean? Oh, that's my old ladies, man. Like, you know, that's a hard one to pull off, especially if you're not comfortable with it. And then so you have to do it and do it and do it and do it in life. Where I remember I was like, hey, so how's your old lady? And then my friends would be like, was like how's my what, dude? How's your old lady, dude? Yeah, my girlfriend. Fine. How embarrassed were you to do those six, those six scenes? <laughs> I'm so really embarrassed. I still so cringe at the thought of that. I, you know what? Like Your dad's going to see that. I know. My dad's going to see that. I'm going to be like, I don't know, Bobby. You know, like, <laughs> it was written. It was written. Um, no, I mean, I've, you know what? Now that I think about it, man, like I don't remember it being all that crazy. You know, like when I read it, I just you remember doing stuff. And he pulled me, David Ayer pulled me aside, and he's like, you know, I want you to make Michael feel very uncomfortable. You know, I want him to be like, literally want to reach over and be like, shut up, you know? He's like, so I'm just going to let it roll. I'm just going to keep going until, you know, until it goes. So a lot, there are some parts, you know, where 
I, I read it by him about saying certain things. He, he, he got embarrassed. Like, he's very shy with that kind of stuff, too. Like, he didn't want to hear it. Um, he had, he had, yeah, he even had, like, a flushed face after. He's like, okay, okay, that's enough. That's enough, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think cup him and suck him after. I was like, all right, cut. <laughs> cut after that one. Uh, we surveyed around. I mean, and Kendrick actually told me one of one of the ones to say. And, you know, you had some of the grips like, "Oh, have you heard of this one?" Yeah, and, like, say certain. I'm like, like, no, like, yeah, you're like, you're like YouTubing Urban Dictionary. Like, what is this and what's that? And it's kind of funny, but um, so yeah, real. It's, uh? those things are real. Google oh yeah, like yeah. Texas Twister and 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 uh, I can't remember the other one. But there's that's cool. Rusty <laughs> Rusty trombone. But see, like there's just all the rest of stuff that's just like, so I'm really embarrassed about that. I mean, that's going to be something that's like, shit, that's going to be with me forever. Um, you know, and, and, and I remember watching it, and my little sister, she's 15 years old, I took her to go see one of the screenings. Oh, yeah. And then I was kind of like, oh my god, I forgot about that. Oh, she's like looking at me weird. I'm like, dude, it's just scripted. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's nothing to see here. Fireworks <laughs> It's embarrassing, it is. And then these guys, I mean, it's just opening up all kinds of doors for people to be like, hey, you know, like. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're gonna be that. Yeah, I wanna be that girl now. Like, Have so. you heard of the blah, 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 blah? Yeah. <laughs> Not cool. Or maybe real cool, who knows? <laughs> Last night you said that there were different endings. Um, why did he choose that particular ending? Um, I, I don't know, but I think that that's, that's something that we talked about, you know, that. In, in the first draft, you know, uh, both of them, you know, suffer that whatever. Um, it'd probably be better not to not to give away the end. You know what I mean? He's like, how was he? T he goes home. <laughs> no, no, what do you mean? <laughs> yeah, really she dies. She dies. <laughs> no, um, yeah, but there was like a bunch of different endings that. Uh, um, you know, she was actually at it, you know, and it was one where it was, I suffered a casualty, like he suffered a casualty, and then we both suffered a casualty. It was hard. Um, and it was a tough day for you. I, oh, I mean, she's probably better now. Yeah, well, he was just, a, I, I feel like he, what he did that just kind of to have his options, I think also to keep that kind of control over it. I don't think anybody knew what it was. Like, I didn't know what it was until, and I don't think you knew either, right, until you kind of I saw, no you know, that, I think that's his part of his whole thing, but, um, I feel like he did that just to kind of, I feel like he kept, I see, I can't say anything without even giving any kind of a way, but, you know, he has his methods of his own madness, and I think it's kind of evident why that happens, and I think one of the greatest things about this movie is, you know, like, you can't expect anything, because then if you expect it, you're wrong. You know, it's kind of one of those, it's not a classic, you know, studio-driven where, like, you don't have the freedom to do this, like, everybody has to do, be a certain way, or the movie needs to be a certain way, you need to have a certain amount of things in it. This was kind of shot in like indie indie verse you know and it kind of has its own ending so it's i think it's great the ending because you don't expect it you don't see it coming um and it's kind of awesome so that's probably one of the reasons why you should tune in and watch because you don't really know you can't you know, can't expect anything out of it but it was a really hard day i mean imagine shooting a crying scene for 10 hours you know usually our work days are 12 to 14 hours um, you know, you give an hour or two of that of you know makeup in here and stuff, and then shooting every scene, every possible outcome, and just having to cry at all times. <laughs> it's like you get dried out. <laughs> so why do they call you Big Evil? Cause my evil's big. You're my brother. If anything happened to you, I would take care of your kids. Word is, we got a hit on y'all, man. Y'all been ringling. We're cops. Everybody wants to kill us. Whoa, 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 whoa. 13 X-ray 13, suspect running on foot. Look at me. We're shooting our way out of here, bro. Okay. On three, dude. You're gonna empty your mag and run. One, 